Good evening, everyone. This is the Owen J. Roberts Board of School Directors regular business meeting being held on February 27, 2023 at 7 p.m. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and presentation of colors by the Naval, Navy Junior Reserves Officer Training Corps, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join us in a moment of silence as we reflect on those serving in the United States Armed Forces, both past and present, the elected leaders of, for the state of Pennsylvania and elected leaders of our nation. We have much to be thankful for in our community. Color Guard Post Colors. Please be seated. Okay. Our executive session announcements, the Board of School Directors met on the following dates in executive session to discuss items in one or more of the following areas. Personnel, legal, or real estate matters. January 23rd, 2023, February 13, 2023, February 27, 2023. Agenda item four, the superintendent's report. Dr. Stout. Sure, thank you, Mrs. Peterson. We'll start first with Hayden Streeter for the Student Government Executive Council report. And I know, Hayden, you did say you need to leave us right after the report, so feel free to do that. Okay, so the second semester has gotten off to a great start. Students have completed the primary phase of course selection for the 2023-2024 school year, and schedule building has begun. School Counseling also hosted a junior information night last week to help prepare current juniors and their families for the college application process. Students across disciplines have been actively involved in competitions at the local, regional, and state level. Our academic team season came to an end last week. Members of the coding club competed at a hackathon. Mock trial has been competing in Westchester. DECA had a great showing at the state conference and our NJROTC unit just received glowing reviews at their annual inspection. Members of the band, orchestra, and chorus have been showcasing their talents at regional PMEA events, while the indoor percussion season started with a first place finish. Members of the swimming and diving team and wrestling team competed at regional events last weekend, while our indoor track and field athletes participated at the state track and field championships. Students are hard at work on this year's musical, Mamma Mia, which will run in mid-March. Lastly, the prom fashion show was a huge success this year and showcased the talents of our upperclassmen. We want to thank the PTSA for all the work they do for this event. And as a result of this event, the PTSA has generously made a $7,500 donation to the prom to help offset costs for all students. The middle school is also off to a great start for the new semester. Middle school band and orchestra students put on quite a show at their winter concert this past Wednesday evening. The middle school book fair was held last week and run by the middle school PTA. Every student had a chance to visit the fair with their respective ELA classes. Several students participated in our annual Reading After Dark event last Thursday evening, and students enjoyed refreshments as they got lost in their favorite book. On Friday evening, the Builders Club once again hosted our, our student versus faculty basketball game. This year, the event was held in the high school gymnasium. All proceeds were raised that were donated to the Fidel McKenna Foundation to support children battling cancer and their families. Students are excited for the part of our spring sports season, which starts on March 20th. And the middle school building wide PBIS program is underway and students are earning all sorts of cool rewards for displaying positive behavior in the building. Data teams in all of the elementary schools met this past week to review the recent mid-year assessment data. 
The new Link It Data Warehouse was utilized to organize the data and help identify students who may need additional academic support or enrichment. The academic coaches assisted the teachers in using the data to plan for instruction. This mid-year data will be shared with families at the upcoming parent-teacher conferences being held on March 1st and 2nd. Elementary students will be participating in the upcoming Read Across the District event that will occur on March 2nd, and students in all of the elementary schools will celebrate literacy by stopping what they are doing and spending time enjoying their favorite books. Finally, the PTA and PTO groups are an important component in all of the elementary schools, and we are grateful for their contributions. Recent events in the schools include special dances and toy bingo. We invite all families to attend our upcoming events. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Hayden. A couple announcements on my end. Uh, tonight, I want to welcome Mr. Warren Chester, our newly elected school board director. Uh, Warren was officially sworn into office on Friday, February 24th, and will complete Paul Friel's term, which ends on December 2023. So it was great to attend his swearing in uh, with his daughters last week. So welcome aboard. Yeah. Last week was a bus driver appreciation week. Bus drivers were recognized on our social media pages and a resolution is included on tonight's agenda. So again, I want to thank our bus drivers in our school district for what is often a thankless job. However, we greatly appreciate you know everything that you do. And if you are interested in being a bus driver, we have plenty of of openings and we will provide the training and pay for your training to be a bus driver in the district. So it is a very challenging but yet very rewarding job. So thank you bus drivers. Uh, parent teacher conferences are scheduled for March 1st and 2nd. Uh, students will have half days. Friday, March 3rd will be a professional development day for staff and a non school day for students. And the last announcement I have is our next town hall meeting will be held next Thursday, March 9th at the new district service center. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a housekeeping item to uh, take care of now before we go into public comment. We have a uh, addendum to the agenda that we have to make. There was something inadvertently left off uh, this month's agenda. So we are going to make a motion to amend uh, agenda item 13.15 which uh, does already exist, but we will be adding uh, additional information to that agenda item. And, and the specific uh, ad um, amendment would be to include the following agreements, uh, the approval of a Trich Shell consulting agreement for E-rate application services, and also approval of CDW government LLC purchase agreement for E-rate customers through the federal E-rate program as presented. Uh, by way of further explanation, the program is for funding year 2023, which is effective as of July 1st, 2023, and terminates on June 30, 2024. Uh, the amendment is permitted under the Sunshine Law. Uh, we are required to announce to the public the reasons for the amendment, and those are to assure that the administration has adequate time to file um, or to uh, make all necessary filings to qualify under the rate program. So if I, I'd request a motion and a second for that. I make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. This motion passes. Thank you. Agenda item five, public comment. There are two opportunities for public comment. The first section is for information, proposals, and statements from individuals or delegations pertaining to items on the agenda that will be voted on tonight. Speakers are to indicate your name, township of residence, and the items on the agenda to which your comments are addressed. Speakers will be limited to not more than three minutes. Please understand that this is not a time for dialogue with the board. Rather, the board will listen to all comments and consider them in future deliberations. The second section will be at the end of the meeting and is for residents to speak on any item. If you have any question for the school board, please email all board of school directors at schoolboardmembers at ojrsd.net and you will receive a re written response. For anyone online, if you would like to make a comment, please use the raise hand function. When it is your turn to speak, please use your name and township of residence. Madam President, there's no online public comment. Okay. We good? Everyone good?
good? Okay. Agenda item six, board committee reports. Uh, a working session was held on February 6, 2023 at 7 p.m. The following committees met at this time, curriculum and instruction, finance, building and grounds, and legislative and policy. Agenda item 6.2, Chester County Intermediate Unit. Mrs. Munson. The Chester County Intermediate Unit met um, this past Wednesday, and uh, we had a lovely presentation on the budget, and I'm sure you will all be glad to know that there are no major changes for us. Basically, for our con contribution to the core budget for the CCIU for this year, there's it's essentially flat. And then for the uh, Technical College High School tuition, essentially flat as well. Uh, we do actually have an increasing number of students uh, attending TCSH, so we may see the total go up, but it's because it's the number of credits that our students are taking at the school, rather than a, an increase in the tuition per student. Um, I've got a whole beautiful presentation, if any of you would like to look through it, and they have also offered to come and address our board if the board would like to hear directly about the budget. Uh, we do need to approve it for them, I think, before April 15th. Um, it's April, yeah, <laughs> that's the target uh, that we need to review and, and approve the CCIU budget. Um, but I did not see anything in there that alarmed me, and I know they've done a lot of good for our students and our district. Um, there's also like wonderful information in the presentation about how much their cooperative savings programs have saved our district. I took excellent notes and then left them at home. So my apologies for that. <laughs> but. Um, uh, our next meeting for the CCIU will be the third Wednesday. Shoot, took notes on that too. Um, April the 19th is our next meeting at 7.30 p.m. at the uh, CCIU Educational Service Center. Thank you. If you could share that presentation with the board, I think many of us would like to see okay. it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And can I just add, thank you, Mrs. Munson, for that report. At our next working session in March, we are going to have uh, Dr. Fullerton and Dr. Gerhardt from the Chester County Intermediate Unit come and talk to us about the TCHS programming and uh, give specific information about ONJ Roberts and our participation. So they'll be at our next work session. I, I should probably also warn, um, when we talk to Dr. Fullerton and Dr. Gerhardt, we should also ask them about the future plans for the CCIU. They have started to note um, in our meeting that Programs are at capacity, and the the county should consider building out. Um, the The board of the CCIU is going to start looking at multiple options for how we can improve the space or expand the space that the CCIU has access to. Thank you. Six point three curriculum and special education committee, Mrs. Sabo. The Curriculum and, and Special Education Committee met as part of the working session on February 13th. There were two items on the agenda. Dr. Soder reviewed the three summer programs that um, are on this evening's agenda. Jumpstart program available for elementary school students who are currently receiving reading or math support. Kinder Camp is available for incoming kindergarten students and summer enrichment including both recreational camps and academic courses. Dr. Soder also answered questions about the assessment data from last spring and the interim assessment data from this winter. The results are available on, Pe on Pennsylvania Future Ready site and the district's annual report. Upcoming topics for the committee include staffing and an update about the a new STEAM course. That concludes my report. Thank you. Finance, Building, and Grounds Committee, Mr. Harmanos. The Finance, Building, and Grounds Committee met on March 6th for a committee meeting. At this meeting, we discussed the draft preliminary budget and we also discussed the 10-year capital plan uh, and included in that discussion was uh, Ms. Crumrine, uh, Mr. Shulgren, and Ms. Uh, Daniel Hoffer from the Schrader Architectural Group. And then on February 13th, the Finance, Building, and Grounds Committee met as part of the working session where we discussed the traffic study report and the student transportation report. Uh, the Finance, Building, and Grounds Committee will meet again on March 6th as part of a committee meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Legislative and Policy Committee, Dr. Melmazak. Yes, uh, LMP also met on uh, February 13th. Uh, on the uh, agenda, you'll see a couple items uh, from LMP. Uh, item 7.10, it regards uh, two policies for the first reading. 
One includes uh, one uh, regarding dress and grooming and the other regarding searches of students, student lockers and student vehicles. We also have uh, one policy under uh, item 7.11, which is uh, basically changing the policy from a policy to a regulation uh, since th uh, there's the language has been changed uh, in that policy. Uh, we also have one item under item 7.12, which is um, policy 536 regarding personal leave. And that one is, is being uh, deleted because we do have it in other, other policies as we are trying to, you know, get all these, you know, multiple policies down to, to one or two uh, for each, each, uh, each uh, topic. We also have um, six uh, policies in uh, item 13.7. Uh, but these are all policies that were are here for the, the second reading. And we have one more policy uh, for deleting uh, that was for the deletion for the second reading and that's under item 13.8. We do also have a amended policy under item 13.13. Uh, policy 8.1 is being amended. Um, and lastly, uh, we have item 13.2 which is the approval of the school calendar for 2023 and 2024. And we should be meeting again, tentatively March 13th. Thank you. The personnel committee, Dr. Rotoli. Yes, the personnel committee is meeting tomorrow. I do have an update from the HR department. The HR department represented at O&J School District at the ARE Recruiting Fair in Ocean City, Maryland on February 4th. Students at this fair attended from colleges and universities in Delaware, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. We were also represented at the Chester County Recruiting Consortium at Moravian University on Friday, February 24th. Um, the countywide recruiting cam campaign kicked off on Friday, February 13th. This has been a joint effort because just as there is a teacher shortage, there's also been a major shortage in power for professional, custodial, bus driver maintenance, and food service candidates throughout the county and beyond. This campaign was created to pull Chester County District and IU resources to promote jobs and education with funding coming from the vendors instead of the school districts. Thank you. Agenda item seven, the 7.1 motion to approve recommended routine matters consent items 7.2 through 7.12. Board will make a motion to approve the following routine matters for which are items 7.2 through 7.12 as action consent items. Do I have a motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. Any discussion? I just wanna ask a question about um, a couple of these these uh, just simple questions that I'm sure Mrs. Carmine can answer. Um, and I'm sorry that I don't know the answers to this already. It's okay. What is the difference between a cap the capital reserve fund and the capital projects fund? They're not the same thing? They're not. Basically, it's the difference is the definition under the school code. So we have, we are permitted fund number 32, which is the capital reserve fund. And that's, you're allowed to use that capital fund to move tra transfers over to pay down debt and to use for capital expenditures. Okay. Fund 39 is the capital projects fund. <clears throat> and it has, it's very similar. <laughs> it's very similar. So you, you, when you have a bond issue or you have a large capital project, you can use that fund for those items. Um, you can also transfer funds into those. So they've changed the definitions of these two things over time. Okay. So I would rather collapse them in one, but once you put money into 32, you can't move it to 39. So therefore we have two, 32 and 39. So we have two funds. You can pretty much use them for the same thing, but fund 39 you may not use for debt service. Uh, okay, okay, I see. Now, when I forget this later, where can I look this up and read this on my own? Um, Where would you, I find this information? It's on PDE's website. Okay. But I can direct, I can send you a link. Do you want me to send you a link? That'd, That'd be, be great. great. Okay. Um, and my other question is food service. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about this many times, and I know that Warren doesn't hasn't heard any of these discussions, so here you go. Um, I know <laughs> that food service, we try to make that a neutral, uh, you know, doesn't affect our budget. 
Um, but I do see that the, the numbers are not obviously exact, like I just mm -hmm. looked at the year to date. So what happens when there is a surplus in that? Where does that money go and what, how do we manage that? So in the food service fund, which is an enterprise fund, so it's supposed to operate, PDE says it needs to operate like a business. So if we have excess funds at the end of the year, it stays in the food service fund. Okay. What we're not to either reinvest for capital equipment or you know, whatever other items you may want to do to enhance the program, those types of things. If the food service fund has a deficit, we are required to cover it with general fund dollars, and then we would be coming to you and ask for a transfer to cover it. Okay. It's really supposed to be self-sustaining. Right. That's the okay. goal of it. Okay. So if, if if there was a lot of money in there, you might make adjustments to what you're providing, or what, you know what you're. We could make adjustments to what we're providing. What we have all, also done in the past is use any ex, ex, additional funds to help with capital purchases. If we're building a new school, like for example, West Vincent was an example where we used additional funds to pay for the kitchen equipment in that school to help offset the okay, tax it has impact. To be food service related. has to be food. It has to be food service. Nope. Okay, thank you. You're That's welcome. Sure. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. 8.1, acknowledge receipt of donations, contribution, and gifts. The following contributions and gifts were received. Uh, at the middle school, the Charities Aid Foundation America uh, donated $25 toward the general fund. At East Coventry Elementary School, is it is it Sergey's or SIRJ's? Are we all in? I'm going to say Sergey's just for fun. Um, $46.15 for uh, that were vending machine profits. As I understand, um, East Vincent Elementary School, the East Vincent PTA contributed five thousand nine hundred and sixty-six dollars toward the purchase of equipment for the pavilion, four thousand six hundred and one dollar and fourteen cents towards a field trip to the Chester County Courthouse, four hundred and four dollars and seven cents towards a field trip to the uh, Montgomery County Community College Challenger Learning Center. $345.93 towards a field trip to Warwick County Park, $750 towards a field trip to the Reading Public Museum, and $395 towards a field trip to the Elmwood Park Zoo. At French Creek Elementary School, again, I'm sorry. The second oh, I'm sorry, $4,601, I said it again, $461.14 towards a field trip to the Chester <laughs> County Courthouse. Yeah. Am I on track now? Okay, thank you. Um, French Creek Elementary School, Sir Jay's, $19.74, which were vending machine profits. And at West Vincent Elementary School, the West Vincent PTA donated $16,698 for the installation of playground equipment. And Sir Jay's, uh, $43.43 for vending machine profits. Do I have a motion to acknowledge the receipt of those donations? So moved. And a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. 9.1, the motion to approve routine matters, consent items 9.2 through 9.4. I'm looking for a motion to approve the following routine matters, which are items 9.2 through 9.4 as action consent items. Do I have a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. Agenda item 10.1, board discussion. Does anyone have anything they'd like to discuss at this point? I was going to make a, a comment uh, under 8.1 for donations mm -hmm. um, in that we should also thank our community once again uh, after the fire at Oak, Oak, or, Oak or Orchard Ridge um, the other night. Uh, and also I think there's the Branch Life Church has also been stepping up and uh, both our community and, and they have been really helpful then and, and in the past, so thank you for them. 
If, if you're not aware, um, there was a fire within the community that affected um, some OJR families, and um, what Dr. Malnazak is talking about is the outreach from our community toward those families um, to get back on track. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, Mrs. Kermine, do we have any old business? Nope. Okay. We are going on to 12.1, motion to approve personnel at items. Looking for a motion to approve the following personnel matters, which are items 12.2 through 12.5, as action consent items subject to the proviso as presented. Board reserves the right to reduce and or discontinue any appointment and payment herein should any future events, whether known or unknown, make it impossible or impractical to implement the extracurricular activity. So do I have a motion uh, to approve personnel consent items 12 through 12.5? So move. And a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. New business, 13.1, the approval of Bus Driver Appreciate, Appreciation Week Resolution. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Bus Driver Appreciation Week Resolution, February 20th through 24th, 2023. Whereas bus drivers in service of the district demonstrate a commitment to the safe transportation of our most precious possessions, our children, despite often adverse weather and road conditions. Whereas our bus drivers are often placed in extreme stressful situations which require a high degree of physical and psychological stamina and endurance. Whereas our bus drivers have demonstrated a record of safety and efficiency in the performance of their duties. Whereas our bus drivers make a positive contribution to the school climate and self esteem of students. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Owen J. Roberts School District and the Board of School Directors designate February 20th through 24th, 2023, as Bus Driver Appreciation Week in recognition of our bus drivers for all of their efforts on behalf of the school district and its students. This motion, or sorry. Uh, this resolution is adopted at a meeting of the Board of School Directors of the Owen J. Roberts School District on the 27th day of February, 2023. Yep. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. A second? I'll second. Any discussion? Uh, Better can I ask a quick question? Right? <laughs> is, is this going to be a yearly thing? I think we do every year. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to kind of ask along the same lines because like, that year, that week is already over. Did we? What do we do specifically for the bus drivers? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, a, I, I believe it's a, a national week. So what we do is um, on our social media, uh, we send out a thank you to our whole community to let them know the, how much we appreciate our bus drivers and encourage them to be recognized by the students and, and parents as well. So maybe next year we should put it on the January agenda just to make sure we don't miss it. <laughs> Uh, maybe we could. We'll talk to our uh, communications director. I know uh, Michael was on top of it this year, so uh, that's something we could take a look at. So you're right, it is after the fact, but publicly, we just wanted to recognize our bus drivers, and we did so last week, but I thought it was a nice gesture to do it at our school board meeting. And I definitely could we just make it a standing week for like the third week of every February? <laughs> It's yeah, it's a national. We don't determine the week. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Keep us guessing. Just trying. Yes, yes. But I think uh, I, I speak on behalf of everyone of how thankful and appreciative we are of our bus drivers. And we encourage, yes. And uh, we encourage them to recruit a friend. Um, if you know a, a, someone with your talents and, and time, and, and uh, we, we would love to uh, meet them and um, show them our buses. Uh, so thank you very much. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Okay, 13.2, the approval of the school calendar for the 2023-2024 school year. Do I have a motion to approve the school calendar for the 2023-24 school year as presented? So moved. And a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. 13.3, the approval of 1502 local holidays resolution for the 2023-24 school year. 
Approval of the 1502 local holidays resolution for the 2023-24 school year is presented, which include November 24, 2023, December 22, 2023, January 15, 2024, February 19, 2024, and March 29, 2024. Do I have a motion? So moved. Yes. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? The motion passes. 13.4, the approval of out-of-state overnight student trips. May I have a motion to approve the out-of-state overnight student trips as presented? So moved. In a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. 13.5, approval of conference attendance. May I have a motion to approve the conference attendance as presented? So moved. In a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. 13.6, the approval of 2023 summer programs. May I have a motion to approve the 2023 summer programs as recommended by the Curriculum and Special Education Committee from the working session meeting held on February 13, 2023. So moved. In a second. second. Any discussion? Actually, I do have a question. And this was, um, uh, the CCIU also has a summer program and there were some discussions about difficulties getting staffing for the summer programs as we're having difficulties getting staffing for a lot of positions. Um, are we currently having trouble staffing the summer program or are things proceeding the way they usually do? As far as I know, they're proceeding the way they normally do. Um, and I know that if we don't um, obtain the staffing that we need, we probably are not putting the program out there because I know Dr. Soder works very closely with her staff in order to put the programs make the programs available to the community. So you can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. 13.7, approval of policies for second reading. May I have a motion to approve the following policies for second reading as presented. So moved. In a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. 13.8, approval of policies for deletion for second reading. May I have a motion to approve for the approval of policies for deletion for second reading as presented. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. 13.9, the approval of a confidential settlement agreement and release. I look, please have a motion for approval of confidential settlement agreement and release as presented. So moved. A second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. 13.10, ratification of homebound instruction. May we have a motion for the ratification of homebound instruction as presented? So moved. We have a second? Second. Any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. 13.11, the approval to establish a student activity. Approval to establish, may I have a motion to approve the establish a student activity club in accordance with the provisions of section 511 of the Pennsylvania School Code and School Board Regulation 122A and or 122B as presented. This approval also provides for the establishment of accounts within the student activity accounting system where applicable. Do I have a motion? So moved. And a second. Second. Any discussion? Can I just ask what an optimization? I was literally club is? Gonna ask uh. the same thing. I think we're all. <laughs> well, it's interesting that you asked me that because I I read through it today. 
uh, when I was looking at it, but just a, a brief description that was included in the application. This club is being formed in order to provide support and mentorship to students seeking to optimize their lives through small, everyday mental and physical changes. So that is the description. There's much more information in the request, but um, it looks to me like it's, it's like a mental health or well-being type of, of club for students. Is this part of the, I know there was a, a net, like an optimists club, uh, like a national organization. This no. isn't part of the optimists organization. No, no, it's I believe this is separate, yes. Okay. To me, it sounds a lot like mindfulness too, mindfulness training and just mental health, so. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. 13.12, approval of student activity club advisors and student officers. Do I have a motion to approve the approval of student activity club advisors and student officers in accordance with the provisions of section 511 of the Pennsylvania School Code for the 2022-2023 school year as presented? So move. And a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. 13.13, .13, the approval to amend policy 008.1, total annual positions. Uh, may I have a motion to, uh, for the approval to amend policy 008.1, total annual positions for the 2022-2023 school year? Motion. And a second. <laughs> Second. Any discussion? I, I wasn't sure I quite understood what yes. this was. <laughs> Jackie, could you explain to the board what this is? Sure, I'm happy to explain. Um, policy, this policy is where we come to the board annually, and we do this every year, once a year, and actually uh, provide you with what our current staffing is. So this is the current actual staffing for the 22-23 school year by all of the different, by building and by employment category really employment contract so this is your starting point for the budget so this is where we start from and then we bring you staffing um, changes changes or requests uh, at the March 13th so that's coming up so we, we always want to make sure we, that you have this prior to the staffing also, discussions what I'm confused about is why is it approval to amend the policy is that really the right wording? it change it changes every year so we're just amending the numbers change. I don't okay. know if that's the right word, Mr. Supers. It's the if word you go back we've been using last, forever. The, if you go back to the policy that's in there now, it's 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 you know different numbers. Um, oh. Again, Everything why is why is same. policy not a regulation? I, I wouldn't know. Okay. And maybe we should look at that. It, we no, call it no. position control, <laughs> and it is. I mean, every school has position control where the, you're making sure you're reconciling all of the positions. Um, to what the budget versus what actual and then you, you that's your jumping off point so if the board doesn't want that for that to me the policy seems to be a different thing than this is what you had and this is what the change i don't know, just seems well, not worded properly but the total annual positions in the 008 is, is always actual so every right. year it's changing from actual to actual it's our starting point for the budget yeah. but if you believe that it should be looked at policy versus regulation we can certainly Send it over to the policy committee. I'll leave that to Ms. Dr. Melvin. <laughs> well, I guess the key Lord. question is it's up to you. <laughs> the key question is what if we did not accept the amendment of the policy? Would we be stuck <laughs> with the numbers from last year? No, because you already, I mean, you approved a budget, right. and we hired according to that budget. And quite honestly, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we doing this again? <laughs> if you don't want us to do this, we certainly do not have to do this. It's really. I guess LNP can take a look at what their yeah, policy I mean, 008 <laughs> requires us to do this every year. Right. And what's and I think trying to find out the history of why it would why we have it in the first place what's would help us to determine whether or not we need it. You know, was well, this an antiquated uh, PDE policy that we've we built into our policies no it was probably a prior board that requested i'll be honest with you it's a prior board most likely that requested this information in policy format if the current board is not interested in having it in a policy format i don't think it's a requirement of pde mm -hmm. 
Correct. Then perhaps Just it was a transparency. Right. No, <laughs> then I, I, I mean, would ask if, if we could have LNP review it to, okay. to see if this is well, can you, appropriately moving forward. Can we you shall explain do that. to you what I'm, exactly I'm, I'm looking at though? So is this, are, well, what we approved last year for staffing and then what we're looking at now. So are these the positions that are hired, like who we actually have, or are these all open positions also? It's a combination of both. Okay. And that's there different from what we approved them. at the end of last year. It could very well be different because if there were specific student needs that needed to be addressed, such as paraprofessional need, we would have, it would be different. Okay. So I, I will share, this is the first experience I've had in my career uh, <laughs> with this document <laughs> when I saw it last year. So I don't think it's a requirement. But again, I think it would be good to go back to LNP to see you know, what the board wants. Do we want this anymore or do we not want this? as we move forward. It is a, a, the one thing I will say, it is a good, you know, it's for the budgeting purpose, and maybe we don't need to have it approved at a board meeting, mm -hmm. but let you know where we're at right now when we're going into the budgeting for next year with staffing. Right, and even if this wasn't a policy, this is numbers you would be compiling to show us as part of the budget process. Yes, we show, I mean, we show it to you now as part right. of the budget. It's, it's all part right. of the process. But we could show it to you in a different way. Right, right. but you, it, these numbers wouldn't go away. You wouldn't be not reporting on these just if we didn't oh, have no, a policy need, on it. This is the, the numbers. This starting is the biggest, point. This is the biggest cost in your right. budget. Mm -hmm. So it's, they're important numbers. <laughs> well. I, mean, I think at, at minimum what we should include is some you know, prior numbers in here, like last year versus this year or something like that. Or so the budget you, number. You know, say, oh, look, we're increasing by x percent or whatever it is right and we usually do bring that to you we'll bring that to you at the march working session but yeah you're not saying that you're in favor of putting that into the policy to make no right well, I'm, there's, there's a table in this document that is pretty meaningless <laughs> right. come when you don't have anything else to compare it to it's not even a good policy <laughs> if you go back to the, to the policy last year the, 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 those numbers are there so you have to just kind of compare this to the old policy which, yes, it's pretty stupid. Yes, we would, um, would like it all the yeah. uh, How can I say that in a nicer way? <laughs> it's too much extra. But look how much time we wasted. Right, right. so if this board would like this, to go to policy, I understand we'll this take a, it to policy. Yeah, I think it's an important thing to look at. If it's our oh, yeah. biggest cost expense, we should really yeah, understand so it better. It yes, yes. But, having, but having a, a policy mean. vote on it perhaps isn't necessary. Um, especially considering how long we've now talked about a vote we think is unnecessary, but we have to take it anyway. Um, all in favor of this motion? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Aye. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't understand. Thank it's you, meaningless. Mr. Hermanos. The motion passes. <laughs> okay, 13.14, the approval of an addendum to the employment agreement with Teamsters 384. We have a motion for the approval of an addendum to employment agreement with Teamsters 384 as presented. So moved. And a second. second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. The motion passes. 13.15, the approval for professional services maintenance agreement. May I have a motion for the approval of professional services maintenance agreement as presented and amended? Yes. As presented and amended. So moved. And a second. second. Any discussion? I have a, just a couple questions sure. about these contracts that I just wasn't sure I understood them properly. Um, the power school, Professional service agreement has two different things there, and not one of them regarding special education. And I was wondering if, is that curricular programs that we're talking about? And, you know, we often talk about contracts and software licenses and things like that, but I do, wasn't sure if this falls under something that the curriculum committee should have, be overseeing or anything like that, these, these type of things. We just usually look at these for about five seconds and that's the end of it. But, I, you know, I don't know if this is actually a curricular item. That's my question. Is, is Power School our scheduling system? Yeah, we use, Power, we use Power School for, for a number of things. So uh, as I look at this, what I, what I think it would be for here, so professional services, the enrollment analytics. So when we give you the enrollment projections, we use Power School for that. So that report right. that Brad gives you every year, so that's the fee for for that contract. I'm at the other one. And then yeah. the professional service for uh, special education, I would think, and Brad, correct me if I'm wrong, is that for IEP writer for what we use for our IEPs in the school district? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Correct. Okay. Not yeah. curriculum. Okay, yeah, not good. curriculum. Correct. All right. Thanks. And then the other question was, we had, saw this kind of lengthy thing about vending machines, and I was just curious about, is this, there are, there are already vending machines. Are you talking about a change in the provider of the vending machines, and what's the benefit of us doing this and getting different vending machines? Sure. Um, this is actually, we have our own vending machines, and our own staff is filling that, but they're not, there's not always time in the day to fill those and to capitalize on before and after school hours. And there's also demand for kids to have snacks before athletic practice and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we worked with Chartwells um, and this is Canteen. So it's really their vendor. So that we, I included an update in Boardline. I'm trying to remember when that was, but we worked with Canteen and then we walked through the building with Mr. Kohler and determined where the best places for those machines to be. So they'll be turned off during the school day unless they comply with our wellness policy. And it depends on if the principals want them on or off during the day. It just depends on if there are any issues with having them on during the day. And if not, then they'll be on and completely maintain the district will receive a commission from them. Okay, and so we don't have to outlay any money to get them in place no, or anything like that? No, absolutely no. And then also, um, it looked as though items that weren't often purchased that would be rotated out, like mm -hmm. they'd be maintained in a Pretty they are maintaining and stocking and really handling everything with the vending machines. Okay, so if there's items that we don't, we can just request. We can we can you know alter Take, that. Yeah, can absolutely. Complain or if it's just absolutely not, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. And I know that um, Heather Bonner, our director of dining services, she will be working closely with the principals and the staff at the high school. So we're just starting at the high school right now. Okay. My, Thanks for that explanation. Sure. My understanding is that the vending machines in the cafeteria area have been out of service for some time. Right, this is the, one of the reasons why we are doing this. We really don't have the staff in order to maintain the vending machines that we have. So we're, our recommendation is to use Canteen because we believe they'll offer a better product, wider variety, they'll be stocked, they're going to maintain them and then we'll receive a commission. So the vending machines you see there now will be removed and then Canteen will come in and supply our vending through Charwells. And it also- Who, oh, who owns the ones that are there? The school district. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. We own those machines. So we will either sell them or, I mean, I'll come up, I'll share with you the recommendation once we, and we could relocate them. We have to look at that part yet, the existing and machines. And it appears as though those machines will, there will be some way to, you know, you know, the vending machines never work and you don't get your thing and, you know, you lose your money. Look like there was a way to recover that somehow. Yes, the, the, vending, the vending machine company will work, will, they'll work with us on that. Okay. Because they are part of Chartwells. The good thing is they're part of Chartwells. We have a contract with Chartwells already. This is okay. an addendum to the existing contract. Okay. That makes sense? Good for the high school kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? The motion passes. Agenda item 14, public comment. Information proposals and statements from individuals or delegations pertaining to any item. Speakers are to indicate your name and township of residence. Speakers will be limited to not more than three minutes. Please understand that this is not a time for dialogue with the board. Rather, the board will listen to all comments and consider them in future deliberations. Also, if you would like to email the school board, please email us at school, all the school board directors at schoolboardmembers at ojrsd.net, and you will receive a written response. For anyone online who would like to make a comment, please use the raise hand function. When it is your turn to speak, please state your name and township of residence. Uh, my name is John Barnett, uh, West Vincent Township, and I came here uh, to give you two uh, sets of thank yous. Uh, number one is, it, it's, not off, it's not said enough, um, a personal thank you from a community member for all the hours that you spend working hard for ONJ Roberts and our community as directors. Secondly, it was about a year ago that you signed a resolution, I think it was a year ago, and that resolution was to ask the state to make the funding of schools fairer, essentially. 
to make the distribution of state dollars to be distributed in a more fair manner. And I wanted to let you know that my colleagues that I work with have worked hard uh, with the legislature to make that legislature to make that happen. And part of that effort was last year's budget. But I want to report back to you that one of the folks that came to talk to you, Stephen Rodriguez from Pottstown uh, School District, the super superintendent there, let us know the other day that they were able to purchase an expensive but very effective reading readiness program for their first graders. I think it's also for kindergartners, and they have a lot of kindergartners. And that's a program that they were not able to afford uh, without the additional funding that the legislature the legislator put into the budget last year. And I believe your resolution was small, but one of the things that really pushed the legislature to take us seriously. So thank you for that as well. Good evening, Colleen Blute, North Coventry Township, East Coventry Township. I'm gonna to add to what he just said, Next year, it will include second grade. And the following year, third grade. What I'm here to talk about is a little bit more serious. Um, it's security and safety in this building. Friday night, there was a basketball game. The students at the middle school versus the staff. The athletic association was to be selling candy, soda, whatever. I was here at 4.30. <clears throat> I went to the gym door. It was locked, which I expected it to be, and it should be. So I thought, all right, I'll go over to the front door. Walked right in the front door. It's 4.30. Those doors should be locked. You're sitting up on top of a hill. You're isolated. Not good. I thought, OK, I'm only going to get through the foyer. I got into the whole building. I walked around this quad here sat down over by the gym, started to eat my dinner because it was Lent, peanut butter and jelly sandwich for dinner. But I needed something to drink and I couldn't open the concession stand because I don't have the key. That's locked. So I walked down this way into the faculty room, purchased my soda and came back. As I came back, I noticed that this door here into the guidance office is open. Now, we meet there as an athletic association in the conference room, and there's always Chromebooks, et cetera, on the shelf. Somebody could have walked in this building and stole everything. I don't know why those front doors aren't locked. They should be locked. And the next thing was, as I'm walking around, I'm thinking, what if there is somebody in here? Hmm. So I did some research. And I know for a fact that there are people that have attended events here that have a permit to carry and that we're carrying on school property. In the state of Pennsylvania, whether you have a license to carry or no license to carry, you are not permitted to have a gun or a weapon on school property. The parking lot, the gym, the cafeteria, the auditorium, this room, the stadium, the bathrooms, they're off limits for weapons. Yet there are people who have had them on school property. And I unfortunately had to tell someone to button their jacket up. So you need to take a real close look at the security of this building because when you have to do an AVI drill with 20 people, littles, it's a lot different than doing it with 20 people here. There are three doors to get in and out of. There's no place to run, there's no place to hide. And ladies, try lifting up those chairs. You can't lift them up. We are not secure in this room. OK. Thank you for your comment. <clears throat> Ms. Peterson, we have one online. Please state your name and township of residence. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Excellent. Um, this is Tavener Bonsall from North Coventry Township. Um, I just want to give a plug and invite everyone here to a free workshop tomorrow night that's open to the entire adult OJR community that's being hosted by the aid committee. This is an executive functioning workshop with Brendan Mahan, who's an internationally known expert on ADHD, executive function, neurodiverse parenting and anxiety. 
The workshop will be held on Zoom tomorrow night from 6.30 to 8 p.m. and is free to the OJR community and will focus on executive functioning skills and strategies for child and teen academic success. If you have a child who struggles with sustaining attention, organization, emotional regulation, or time management, um, or you work, work closely with students at any level, this workshop will be very helpful. Uh, registration is required and the link to register can be found on the North Coventry PTO Facebook page. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comment. Mrs. Peterson, that's the end of virtual and public comment. Thank you. Uh, agenda item 15, board discussion, follow-up, and request for information. I have something real quick. Um, I actually just wanted to go back to something that Hayden reported on at the top of the meeting. Uh, it was related to um, the linked data being shared at the upcoming parent teacher conferences and i just wanted to see what specific data is it that's going to be shared with the parents at those teacher conferences and is it going to be individual student scores related to the pssa's keystones or is it the same data that was shared with us at the curriculum meeting yeah i'll i'll talk about that it, it it's it's conference time, so it would be uh, link it data and other student assessment data particular to this to the uh, parent of the child. Got it. Okay. Yes. So is that are those scores available somewhere, uh, not the individual student scores, but the scores that on the PSSAs, are they available for for viewing somewhere on the website outside of what's available on the website currently if, if so the our, our pssa score is obviously not the individual student not the level individual but our student. school level, school level score, yeah. scores are and dr soder went through that with her presentation it's on the uh, future ready index site on the pennsylvania department of education where you can see our pssa and keystone scores in each of our buildings okay can i get a tutorial on that because i've been trying to find that information and i'm really confused like those that links back to the pde website and i'm just wondering can we find a way to extrapolate that information so we don't have to search through every district that's in this state and all the data that's can Okay. Yeah, and, and that's something maybe we could look at to a, a board workshop, you know, if that's something that you yeah, would design. I mean, we can talk about that. Yeah, the link back to the PDE website, there's, there's probably 15 links to follow on there. And, you know, I think I, I thought I found the right one. It didn't get me to the information I was looking for. It, it was a huge PDF document. Uh, so, you know, if I can't find it, how is a regular district member going to find that information? So. Could, could you just, um, and, and if you don't have this information, no, that's okay, but maybe you can get it for us. Um, what is our uh, policy or what is what, what do we do about after school and the security of our, our buildings and who's inside of them? Yeah, I mean, obviously we have school security that are, we have at different athletic events and so on and so forth. Most times it's not armed security. Um, so. You know, for for example, sometimes at a school board meeting, we will have our security officer here if we're having a large meeting. But I think I saw, I think John may have been here earlier, but then left. So most of the events that we have after school hours, there are not armed security at, unless we're having a large event where we know that there's going to be a lot of people there. So for instance, at high school football games where we know we have several thousand people, we have armed security. But most events, there are not armed security in the building. But the doors right. generally are the unlocked doors. after school, though. Yeah, it depends. If we have, particularly in the high school, there are always after school activities going on. So a lot of times that the doors are left open. Now, during the school day, when our students are here, all the exterior doors are locked and you need to come in through the main office. But after school hours, because of different activities and not having staff here to man the doors, we do typically have the, um, the front doors to the building open if there are events scheduled. So they look and see what's scheduled and determine whether the doors are going to be open or not. Do we have those gates that come down that block off access to certain areas of the building? You know what I'm talking about? Jackie, I'm not sure about that. Do we have those gates here? I'm sorry, could you repeat your question? All gates. 
Do we have the gates available to lock off different parts of the hallways? We do, and okay. many of the schools do use the gates. Yeah. So we absolutely do have sections that are gated. And we could, we could speak with John about that. And are classroom doors locked after school? Class, classroom doors, uh, yes, are locked after school. They're supposed to be locked after school. Okay. And, and since there's no one here usually with uh, that, are, that security that is armed, <clears throat> what would the public do if they saw someone with a gun? Who would they call? How would they call? Sure. We're, well, most events, well, any event that involves a student, there's going to be an advisor, a, a faculty advisor, or approved advisor working with them. Obviously, at our athletic events, we have our athletic director there. So if there would be a concern, as was mentioned here tonight, because uh, that's correct. I mean, no one is allowed other than a, a police officer to carry a firearm on a school campus. So if there would be something like that that a, a community member had a concern about, they could report it to the athletic director, any administrator, or school security that would be there, and we would address the matter. Anything else? Anything additional? Is that, is that something we should do, is put out a reminder to our community that this is a gun-free zone? <laughs> I don't know. No. Um, but we, I mean, we can talk. We can talk about it. I mean, it, I mean, some. I, I think most people know. Um, there's, there's a different threshold on a school system, uh, but it's something that we could talk, talk with Michael and our communications about and consider that. We, we get an annual report from our security, or is that annual? We get <clears throat> security reports. Yeah, you get a. You, the board gets a, a report in executive session. Okay. When. Uh, I was just thinking these are maybe some questions that we might want to kind of stockpile and have them for that next discussion to get more information. And uh, in terms of um, concealed weapons in the building, I'd also like to understand how um, it is affected by or it affects us being used as a polling place, because I do believe that um, that has um, been a concern amongst community members when we have uh, an open campus for polling places whether or not uh, people have concealed weapons on them. Public comment is over. Public, no. There's no public comment. Okay. So if that's the end of board discussion, okay. turn my page. I believe we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>